Aloha everybody and welcome back to the next episode of Look at That There, number seven, in our special edition series of the Kilauea Volcano Eruption, before, during, and after. If you remember in the last episode of Look at That There, number six, and if you haven't seen it, link is right up here, um, we took a general overview of Leilani Estates uh, and we also went to the lower Kahokai where the very first cracks appeared on May 3rd, 2018. So if you'll now please follow me, we will continue our little adventure through the Kilauea volcano eruption before, during, and after. I will now start turning back the clock and we are going to go to May 4th and May 5th, 2018. Our first stop is on May 4th at Mahalo Street between Leilani and Kahokai, and that is the location of Fissure 1. On the same day, Fissure 2 and Fissure 3 appeared as well, with Fissure 2 being located between Luana Street and Makamaya Street on the south side of Leilani Avenue, and Fissure 3 located on Kaupili on the north side of Leilani. I think now would be probably a good time to talk about exactly what a fissure is and a, uh, how they uh, got their, their numbers. Okay, first, basically what a, a fissure is, is a, a, a giant crack or a series of little cracks. They usually start off as, as a very small crack and over time will grow larger and larger as um, we will see uh, as the video progresses and we get into future episodes as well. So, how did the fissure, uh, fissure get, to get their numbers? If I understand it correctly, basically uh, there was a, a set of criteria that was used uh, to determine whether it was just a crack or, or a fissure. Basically, when a crack would open up the point and begin smoking and steaming and emitting sulfur dioxide, I believe is one of the key components because it could steam, but if there was very little sulfur dioxide or something like that, then it really wasn't a fissure. Um, but it's when it really started emitting gases and things like that that it was considered a fissure and given a number. So basically, the fissures uh, don't necessarily follow the pattern of eruption. Um, as to you know which fissure erupted first that is okay now let's go take a closer look at the area of fissure one and just real quick the little volcano icons just represent the general area they don't necessarily represent where the lava erupted from or anything like that the orange lines however those are the usgs lines stating where the cracks were located and the length of said cracks. Looking at the map, um, we can see Google says that this imagery is from March 16th, 2017. So this is what the area looked like uh, just a little over a year prior to the eruption. Let's go on down to a street view level and take a closer look around. Uh, according to Google Earth, this imagery is from September 2011. So that was uh, seven years ago. So I don't know how much has changed in the area, but uh, the orange line you see there in the image, that, that represents the fissure line based on the USGS coordinates overlaid on the Google Earth map. Unfortunately, I have no images of this fissure. We have much more to see, so let's move over to num fissure number two. Uh, fissure number two basically is in between two streets, so there was pretty much no access to it. And again, I have no during photographs of this particular location. Moving over to fissure number three, which is located on Kaopili Street, uh, north side of Leilani Avenue, and the lower end of Leilani, uh, we can see there by the orange line representing the actual fissure line itself. Uh, for number three, uh, it obviously uh, goes through the corner of the house there on the left with the green roof, and there were a bunch of other surrounding houses as well as of 2017, of course. Um, moving down to street level, we, we see, of course, the orange line there representing where the actual uh, cracks had opened up and ultimately became fissure number three. And it runs through, uh, like I said, the corner of that house there. 
I bet the, the people that own that house didn't realize that this would happen one day. Well, actually, none of all, us did, but uh, we've seen many houses in the area around the, these fissures where the cracks literally opened right up under the middle of the house. Uh, one of them I saw was uh, literally from corner to corner of the house. Uh, the house was still standing. It really wasn't damaged, but there was this huge three-foot crack that, that ran under it diagonally. Okay, that'll pretty much do it for May 4th. Um, there were other cracks and stuff that appeared elsewhere, but there was no more named fissures uh, on the 4th. However, moving on to the 5th uh, of May, that is a whole different story. By early morning on May 5th, USGS issued this map, identifying three new fissures, 4 through 6, and lava flows at all six identified fissures at this time. You may notice that fissure 2 is missing the flow field surrounding it on the Google Earth map. That is because of the absence of it within the USGS data. Though it has little consequences because by the next day, that entire area has been changed anyways. By 10 a.m. on the morning of the 5th, USGS released another map showing that another fissure number 7 had been identified and at some point during that day erupted lava as well. Now that we know where everything happened between the 4th and 5th of May, let's go take a, a closer look at before and during images and videos for some of these locations that I have available to me. The first location we're going to visit is Fissure 5, which became Fissure 5 at some time shortly before 5.45 a.m. on May 5th and is the location of the very first imagery I have available. So let's go take a look at it. This is obviously the before, and here is the during. However, this wasn't the uh, only action that was happening this morning. Just a little bit away, and about 15 minutes later, uh, we're over on Makamai Street watching, um, I believe it would be number seven at this point. Now just under 9 hours later at about 2.50 p.m. on May 5th, the eruption at Makamai, or Makamai, excuse me, and Leilani Avenue um, looked like this. So it just goes to show just as quickly as some of this started, it would stop pretty much just as quickly. Uh, just amazing to watch. Look at that there in the top left corner. That tree was literally bulldozed by the lava, burned off at the bottom, and the rest just pushed along. A few hours later at about 4.45 p.m., um, things had calmed down significantly that uh, we were able to get up and close with the uh, uh, lava from Fissure 7 and, and possibly some of it from Fissure 2. Um, it is believed that this uh, uh, is from the 55 leftover uh, in the reservoir under Leilani that was pushed out first uh, before all the pahoy hoy came uh, later. And that pretty much does it for the 5th of May. Now on the 6th things really started changing a lot so let's go ahead and take a look at the after. Before. After. Before after okay everyone that will pretty much do it for this episode of look at that there 
Um, there were quite a few different uh, look at that there moments throughout the whole video. If, if you spotted some of your favorites and I didn't point them out, leave it in the comments below. But there was one of mine that I deliberately didn't say anything about. Uh, I wanted to see if y'all could find it. And uh, the only hint I'm going to give you is that it must have been one really hot phone call. Okay, that'll pretty much do it. Don't forget to check out my, my Redbubble account where you can get t-shirts, mugs, and all kinds of other great items with my photographs and, and different graphics printed on them. Also, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. And if you haven't currently subscribed, go ahead and click that, click that subscribe button now. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notifications when I post new videos. And once again, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate all your support. And hello to all the new subscribers. Uh, can't wait to start seeing your comments as well. So don't forget, hit the but like button and hit those comments down there. And y'all have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening.